Well, here we are. We've done the basic assembly of our frog character from a frontal position. For an animation, you actually wind up with several master characters to work with. And there's a couple reasons that I want to stop at this point and talk about how you use master characters. We've sort of touched on a couple little things about using actions and importing content, but we really haven't connected them together into a professional environment. And that's what this is. This is the frog as I have it built out. I've created the legs, textured them, duplicated them. Let's go ahead and do a quick render so we can see what that looks like. I've made some other slight minor modifications, placements of the eyes, um, some other little shadowing nuances and things, you know, prima donna type of stuff, as well as adding some detail to the legs. We can't see them all because I've got it zoomed in right now in the scene. So for master actions, I want to show you the implications of some of the basic stuff we've learned, and then we're going to put together a very robust set of master actions that we can use in our animations and make life a snap. This is where planning and just aiming ahead makes all the difference in the world. I'm going to create a new file. This is the Frog Master front build number four. So if you have access to the working files, you can open this and this is the one we'll be working with. But before I close this file, I want you to take a look at something. Notice the layer structure in here. We've got separate folders for eyes, head, body, so forth and so on. Here is why that's important. I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. We're going to come up to File, Import, and now we're going to come down to Anime Studio Object. I've saved that file into the Working Files folder, but you could save it into any one of these folders if you had something you were using over and over again. I'm saving it via project. We'll open this. We'll come over to the Frog folder. Here is the one we were just looking at, Frog Master 4. Look what happens when we go to import this. We can import eyes, the frog head, the body, and as we click on these, we see we've got these different options. You can import any grouped element of any object you create. If we wanted to import the whole frog, then what we would need to do back in the main actions area is to create one over-encompassing enclosing folder and put the frog into that. But this is how you would snag eyes for a separate project. You've already done the work on the eyes. Maybe we can use it on a green Martian instead of a frog. The work's done. Simply import that in. So I'm going to go ahead and do cancel here. We're going to reopen that file. But actually, before we do that, let's open another little one because we're going to create some actions. Before I group that one folder into a master one, I'm going to show you how a pro environment starts using the actions palette that we touched on earlier to do a head rotation. The working file for this is the master actions example. It's really a hokey file. We've worked with head rotations using Actions. And again, Actions are a Anime Studio 5 Pro only feature. Let me open up the Actions so we can take a look. We've got some Actions created and it looks like I've got one hanging out there still from when I put the file together. I want to show you the implications of how we use these things. I'm dragging the time slider through the timeline here and nothing is happening. We're back at zero. I have created specific actions. We'll have a look right with concern action. I'll double click that. We'll advance to time frame one on that to see it. So this character is looking one direction, has this look of concern. If I go to blink, then we see that it looks like nothing's happening, but I do have a blink going on. And if you remember, we disclose that by actually opening up the layer that those changes are on, and we see we've got a little animation right here. If I was to insert that, we would see that we've got a little special animation insert there, and we'll do that, in fact. Let me come back up to head total. Whoops, I actually don't want to open that. So we're, we're looking at the blink. We've got the look right with concern action. We've got our reference position which is the normal look straight ahead position. Then we've got our main timeline. So let's come to 18 seconds or 18 frames into this animation. 
with the look right concern, we know that when I, we double click on that, we can get the whole face looking one direction. Let me come back to the main timeline. However, I'm going to insert a reference to this, or I should say this reference, I'm going to insert it at 18 seconds. So we have no change, no tween action between frame one and frame 18. Let's go ahead and insert a reference to that. Nothing appears in the timeline that is expected. However, at frame 24, I'm going to insert a look right concern. And there we are. Well, that's fine. We can see we get a notation for that in our timeline now. I'm going to come to 36 frames. I'm going to reinsert that action so that we have a period of time between keyframe one and keyframe two where this stays the same. It's not going to change. And then at keyframe 48, I'll reinsert reference. Now when we drag the timeline through here, we get our character looking over there and going, what? And then looking back all happy. Well, that's nice, but here is the pro level power of actions. What if I only want the eyes to look over there? Well, then I come down to eyes, look right concern, and I insert. Now only the eyes are moving, the mouth stays the same. This means that for any complex action you create, or morph target is another name for them, you can insert only little bits and pieces into your main timeline animation. We need to take this forward with us as we go into creating these master actions for our frog character.